Okay, hello everyone. Thank you for joining today's session on ggplot2. We are covering chapter nine, arranging plots. So this is a short chapter. And basically what this chapter is about is, well, like the name, like the title say, we are gonna arrange different plots on different ways. The learning objectives that we have here is that we're gonna produce subplots, but as a same part, as a part of the same visualization. And we're gonna cover some different packages then that we can use to do this. So let's go here. First, for the introduction, the chapter focus on one package. Uh, this is the patchwork package, but as mentioned here, there are some other packages such as cowplot, grid extra, ggpubar, that mainly they do the same thing. I personally, I didn't, I don't have a lot of experience with those packages. This is the first time that I do these kind of things like arrange plots into one. So all those packages, they are new to me. So let's continue here. So the first thing that we need, that we want to do is, that it shows us how to do is to arrange plots side by side with no overlap. Let's see, I, okay. In here, they don't show us the code. Oh, I didn't check. Oh, let's see here. Give me one second. Let me see. Okay. Because I didn't go through these slides. I thought they were showing the code, but give me one second, I will. It's okay, take your time. Okay, so let's do it with the book, sorry about that. So the first thing that he shows us how to do is laying the plot side by side. In here- um, Can you make the font bigger a little? Sure. Okay. Thank you. Like that? That's good. Thank you. Okay, perfect. So the first thing that we are going to learn how to do is to lay plots side by side. How we do this, of course, with the library patchwork first, is that we create the plots. In here, we're going to create four plots, uh, geom point, geom bar, Geom density and a stat summary. And here, these are the ones that we are going to use through the chapter as for the examples. If we want to display the plot side by side with the library patchwork, this is very easy. We just do plot one and we add this sign, the plus sign. So we, we just write plot one plus plot two. And the library, the patchwork, he will automatically put the plot side by side. This is the first thing that we learned. This is the first thing on how we can arrange plots. The second one is that if we want to arrange more than two plots, basically we just do plot one plus plot two plus plot three plus plot four. We can add a several plots, all the plots that we need. Basically the library patchwork, it does it automatically. If we have these four, it will create a two times two grid. But if we have a three, as it says here, it will create a one row, a one times three grid, sorry. So it will, do like this one, this one, and this one. 
all of this is made automatically by patch by patchwork, but we can later in this chapter uh, customize it as we need it. And here, so here, now we're gonna take control, start to customize a little bit more of what a patchwork does. So if we have three, if we have three plots and we want to show them with only two columns, we can specify that as num and call equals two. We can change that parameter. Maybe we want three columns. Maybe we just want one column. We can also do end row if we want to customize the rows instead of the columns. And all of this is made in the plot layout parameter. Uh, yes, in the plot layout function that we specify with an extra plus sign. So now what we need to do, if we want to force a single row or a column, we can use these operators this one, this one, the it is the uh, vertical bar. Uh, not sure how how it is called. And this one. So, if we do plot one slash plot two, what we are telling Patchwork to do is that it will show us the first plot in a row and the second plot in a different row. So we are telling us, uh, take the second plot and put it below the first plot with this slash sign. And this bar, this vertical bar, what, basic, what it do basically is that it tells patchwork to add it to a different column. So basically it is the same as using the plus sign. But as we can see with the plus sign, it's a little bit clearer to understand, but basically it's, uh, it does the same thing. And this package also allows nesting layouts for these kind of graphics, for this kind of arrangement arrangements. So if we want to do more complicated layouts, we can do this one. Give me one second. So basically what we're telling us is that first we're gonna do plot one over plot two. We're gonna divide plot three. And we're gonna say that plot two is gonna go uh, above plot one and plot four, this we can see it here. So plot three, we have it right here. Plot two is this part here. And plot one and plot four, these are the, these two that we have here. If you have any questions or any comments, you can interrupt me whenever you want, no problem. Also this part, in here we have a, some different way that we can change the layout. So in this case, a, we have four plots and we're gonna represent them as A, B, C, and D. What basically what we're doing here with this plot layout function is that we're gonna create a design. We're gonna call it layout. And for example, for the first row, we're gonna divide the layout in three rows for the plots. For the first row, what we're gonna do is, we're gonna take two spaces or two columns to show plot A and one column to show plot B. As we can see here, we have plot A on two columns and plot B in just one column. And our figure as one 
it will have three columns. For the second row, we show the C, the C plot here in two, in two rows. It is combined in two rows. So we see it here. This is our plot B, C, sorry. And for our second row, this like hashtag it leaves a white space between plots. It leaves a white space on that column for that row. And again, we show plot B with two rows in just one column here. And for the last row, we're gonna plot, we're gonna do this space is already covered by plot C. And here we have plot D in two columns, as we can see. I think this this one it is very useful. It is maybe it can be quite maybe disorienting if you don't understand, but I think it is very useful and very intuitive intuitive to use. Now what we need to do, what we want to do here is that, for example, we can see that this plot and this plot both shares this legend. So instead of showing the legend on each plot, what we can do is we create here uh, the basic figure. We add all those three. And in the function plot layout, we specify that we want two columns. And the with this parameter, with this guides parameter, if we set it to collect, what it what it will do is it will show just one legend. We can see it here. One legend for the whole plot. So we don't have a legend here on this part and the same legend here in this part. Okay, but as you can see, this is quite of, it looks kind of uh, ugly, <laughs> just to leave it like that. And we have a white space here and this here on the right, on the right part of the plot. What we can do to make this better is that we still have the same basic plot, but we're gonna add we're gonna add this function guide area. What we what this is telling us is like this is telling patchwork that we're gonna leave one space as a whole plot as it was a whole plot, but just for the just for the legend of the whole plot. As we can see, we add it as it was another plot for the arrange. And we use plot layout number of columns equal to two and guides equal to collect. So it has the same legend for, for the whole plot. And that shows us, that gives us a plot with just one legend, just one legend for the whole plot and in its own space as if it was another plot that we are adding. Okay, so what if we want to modify subplots? What if we want to modify just one plot of our, of our arrangement? In this case, this is very interesting. I didn't know that we can just select plots with these, yeah, with these things. I, <laughs> um, I forgot how they are called. Um, square brackets, so called square, square brackets. <laughs> square brackets, right? Thank you. So we can select the uh, the plots with the square brackets. So we're gonna create a uh, our arrangement. We're gonna uh, we're gonna create a like a, like a variable. I'm allowed to say it like that with the with our arrangement with plot one plus plot two that remember that this plot this plus sign what it does is that it adds them to the next column so we create that one 
And what we can do is that we can change subplots. In this case, we are going to change the second subplot in here just by using the square brackets. And sorry about that. We can change just the second subplot with the square brackets. And what we're going to do is that we're going to use that second subplot and we're going to add the theme light. We're going to change the theme light of that second subplot, as we can see well here in this image. Okay, here. Let me share just my. Okay, perfect. So in this case, uh, sometimes we don't want to modify all subplots, or we want to modify all subplots. So in this case, instead of just modifying one, we can modify all subplots using this and the and sign, I think it is called. So we just say plus one plus a uh, plot one plus plot four. We add the and theme minimal. And what it what that does is that it will apply the theme minimal to every plot on on our arrangement. So we we have the option to do it like globally, or we have the option to do it to just one subplot. And we can use different options here as well. Uh, so for example, in here, the books tell us that if we want to change the uh, Y axis, we can do with design end. And we can say that we want to scale continuous with limits zero to 45. And as we can see here, we have the plot from zero to 45 for both plots, because we are doing here with the end. So we are doing globally for the whole arrangement. In here, now, we, if we want to add some notation, what we can do is that we create the plot, we create the arrangement here. So we're going to do plus a uh, plot three plus plot four side by side, different columns, as we know. And we, what we are going to do is that we are going to use the plus sign and we're going to use the plot annotation function. With this plot annotation, function, we can specify the title. As we can see here, we have the title. It, it is a title for the whole arrangement, not just one plot. And we can also so we can also specify the caption here. So we specify the caption here. We close the brackets for the plot annotation. And if we print our, our arrangement, it will look like this. As you can see, here we have the title for the whole arrangement. Uh, here we have both plots in different columns. And here we have our caption. Okay, perfect. So if we want to do some, if we want to change some, some things about the titles or, the caption, everything that we like annotate on the arrange, what we can do is that we're gonna use that same plus sign and we can use the plot annotation function. In here, we are changing the theme. So we are using theme gray and we are using base family equals to mono. As we can see here, this font this change the this changes the font and the theme the color in here we can see that it is different so we can play like a lot with these functions 
I'm sure there are there are a lot of parameters that we can change, a lot of parameters that we can like play with to get different plots. Uh, now, as we were saying, the plus sign is just to add something and the end sign is just to change things like in a global in a global scale for the whole arrangement. So if we do this end, okay, in here, let's see. Yes, if we do this here with the end and we select the same one, theme gray and base family mono, we can see that we are changing everything, every font of the arrangement. So for example, here, DRB, the numbers are changing, the labels are changing, the axis, axis levels are changing, the numbers are changing, the legend are changing, everything changes if we do this with this, this sign. So in here, if we want to like select or if we want to show our subplots with some kind of uh, levels, as they are called here, we can do this with the parameter tag levels. So if we want to like number our plots with Roman Roman numbers or Roman numerics, in uppercase in this case, what we can do is here, we create, our new arrangement. This is plot one, and this is gonna be separated. Remember that this is the same as saying plus, so it will be on the other column. And this will be plot two uh, above plot three. So here we have that second part. And now we're gonna have that, and we're gonna add some annotation. So each plot will be automatically like labeled with those Roman numbers. So here we have one, here we have two, and here we have the third one. Uh, we can also modify these as we want. So for example, uh, we just want to select the second one, the second subplot, and we want to change it. We, want, we need to select that level as new, and here we're going to specify what we want. So plot uh, from plot two, it will change. It will not change the plot number one, the subplot number one, because we are not like specifying that change. And here we have here we specify the change that we are that we want to make. So we are saying that the tag levels now, it will be those Roman numbers, but with a letter. So from subplot two and subplot three, you will have that new annotation that we want. So as you can see here, we can use these kind of things to these functions to play play around with what we need and play around with different, combining different tag levels if we need. So it has a lot of customizing options that we can change. Okay, so now we're, what we are gonna do here is that we are gonna arrange plots on top of each other. So let's see here. We're gonna use this function Basically, it is the main one to add a plot inside of another one in set element. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna select plot one, the main one, and we're gonna use that function in set element with plot two. Basically, the what it does is it shows us the whole, the main one, it is plot, the point plot, and on top of that, we're gonna insert plot two, that is the bar plot. Here we have it. And with left bottom, right and top, we are specifying with those parameters where 
uh, in what part of the main plot do we want to do we want to put that this one do we want to insert this second plot yeah an important thing is that the default is to use npc units uh, this goes from zero to one but any grid unit will work if we want to use it so for example here we have plot one the same point plot that we had before and we're gonna insert plot two the same as before uh, we're gonna specify the left and bottom position and for the right position we're gonna use uh, the unit npc we're gonna set it to one and here it goes all the way to the right part to the right part of the plot and we subtract 15 millimeters so it goes a little bit to the left so it starts here the same as the top the same for the top parameter so we're going to specify that it starts from one so it starts from all the top part of the plot of the first plot as an npc that remember it goes from zero to one and we're going to subtract the same 15 millimeters from the plot so the position it is from the top minus 15 millimeters and we have the align two we're going to set it to full perfect well can you remind us what npc means i forget NPC, I'm not sure what NPC means, but NPC is a unit. It is like a default unit that goes from zero to one. Oh, okay, okay, thank you. Sure. Okay, so in here we're, we can, as we were saying, we can customize this a lot. So we're what we're gonna do here is that we're gonna create a plot here plot two four and basically we're gonna put plot two on top of plot four here we have it and we're gonna collect the legend so we have only one legend for the whole plot and what we're gonna do is that we're gonna add that plot to the point plot that we already have so we have the point plot here and we're gonna insert it we're gonna insert the second plot that we created here. So left bottom left 0 0.5, bottom 0 0.05, right 0 0.95, and top 0 0.9. And here we have well that plot it it doesn't it's not <laughs> very very like pretty. It overlaps with the other one. So it serves most of all as an example of what we can do. And let's go in here we have some other options to customize it as well. So in this case, we have plot one, two. We're gonna do plot one and we're gonna insert plot two as we have it here. We have the point plot and the wire, the wire plot we select the where we want the second plot and if we use the global option and we set the theme to black to bw what it will do is it will change the theme of the main plot but it would change the theme of the of the second plot the plot that it is like inserted as well so this one, this option, this end option, it will change globally, all options, all plots. So that's cool how we can uh, customize all these kind of options that we have. As well, if we want to annotate each plot, if we want to specify with a number, or with a letter, we can do that. So if we have plot one, two that we just created, and we use the plot annotation function with the tag levels. Now we're gonna use letters 
instead of those Roman numbers. So we have A here for the main plot and B here for the second plot that we inserted on top of the main one. And that will be like the main things that the chapter covers. And let's see here. So basically in here, what we can see is some uses of the extra packages that they were showing on the slides. Let's see here. So here we have the patchwork. This is like just the documentation, some examples that we can check, some reference, some references that we can use. In here, we already know all this with the uh, plus sign, how we can do this. These are some other options. We can add some text instead of another plot. We can add just some text. Can we can add, can sorry. You, can you increase the font size again? Okay, sorry. <laughs> okay, is that good? Yes, thank you. Sure, sure, sure. So as I was saying, here we have some uh, more other options that we can check on the patchwork uh, website. Instead of here adding a different plot, what we can uh, we can add some text if we want. We can add a table if we want. Uh, in here we can have like a different options to plot. Here we have like the correlation if. I'm not mistaken. Here we have, well, different ways on how we can combine this with the per function. The per function is the base function, base R function that we can use to set up all those graphic parameters to create our arrangements with the base R. We can combine them all. Here we have some other options. And basically this is just some resources that we can go to if we need to see how it works, what we can do with this package. As we can see, we already went through all of this. And let's see here. Here we have the patchwork as well, documentation. Now in here, we're gonna use, we're gonna show how we can use the grid extra packages, basically to what we are doing with this one, but with the grid extra. Can you make the font size bigger again? Sure. Thank you. So in this one, this is how we create, like uh, with the plus and the, yes, like this is the equal to just saying plus for different plots and the specifying number of columns equals two. We use grid punto, grid dot arrange with grid extra. Here we have how we can create more complicated graphics, more complicated arrangements with the grid extra packages. So the customization uh, parameters that we have in here, instead in here, I see that instead of letters as the design layout on patchwork, they use numbers. Maybe that is easier to understand. So for example, we have a five column here we have five columns and we want that the first that the first plot takes three columns and two rows so we can do we specify here with numbers instead of letters 
we have here different plots. So instead of the hashtag or the, uh, yes, the hashtag, we use NA just to leave blank that space. This is a very, this is like the more complicated that we, we see the options on patchwork from what I can tell. And here as well, we have like all the examples that we can use, that we can use with grid extra instead of patchwork. As well, we have here cowplot, the library cowplot. This is a different library that we can use to do basically the same thing, to arrange different plots. And this is like a better looking or more readable. So we use the plot grid function. It will select plot one and plot two. We can use the level function. So it, it will specify as we, as we did with patchwork A and B for the different plots. We can set it to auto. Or if we want to use not full uh, upper or lower case, auto in lower case, in upper case or auto in lower case. And here we just have some examples of everything we can do here. All those links, all these links are in the in here in the presentation. Here we are, here we have the extra resources. So you can check it to see which package do you like more or to check if maybe some package is, is not capable of is not capable of doing something that you want, maybe another package can do it. And I think that will be all for the chapter. It was a um, short chapter. I don't know if you have any questions, Quinn. No, oh, thank you. Sure. So I don't know if follow a family or a Giwa is here. Maybe any comment or any questions. Yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Matthew. I think it was a good, nice uh, chapter. I think uh, you showed a different method in which we can use uh, to combine our plots. I think it was a very useful uh, chapter. I th thank you very much. I think I will still have to go over uh, the recording if I have time. Thank you. Sure, so let me stop here.